And greetings. Welcome back, folks. Great to have you. Rush Limbaugh ending a fabulous week of broadcast excellence once again. We find ourselves here on Friday. So let's... Live from the Southern Command in sunny South Florida, it's Open Line Friday! No, I'm not going to divulge the rumor. Jeez! Um, do I want people to be blindsided if it happens? Well, they would be blindsided anyway. I mean, I... I'm not... Snurdly, a stupid, bogus poll has totally destroyed everybody today. I'm not piling on wood. I'm just... I'm not... I'm, I'm, it, it really is amazing. It really is amazing. Obama's taken it on a chin. The Obamacare rollout's an absolute disaster. Wherever you look elsewhere, the polling of the people of this country is such. America's satisfaction with the U.S. government drops to new low. Americans speaking out on government shutdown. I think Obama is being kind of crappy. In the NBC Wall Street Journal poll, 51% think that Obama's doing this just to advance his agenda. He didn't really care about any of this. And yet, one bogus aspect of this, Paul, has totally destroyed everybody. Our first caller up there, Shelly, she's beside herself. I don't know how you go. Let's take the call. She- is she ready? Shelly in, in Port Angeles, Washington. I, I've, I've, I've referred to you twice here. I'm as well say hello. Hi. Well, but I'm getting famous, I guess, Rush. Thank you for taking my call. Yeah, you were going to be famous anyway, just by appearing here. Whether you know, no matter how much prepub you got. <laughs> well, uh, I, I just, as my dad would say, I have to admire your spunk because you still carry on. It's it's with the media. It's our bite, mock fry. Shelley, let me tell you the truth. The American people are not in love with Obama. The American people are not in love with Obamacare. The media is, but the American people aren't. But it doesn't matter. Because with all your your reaching of the choir, the media, the lion at the gate, no matter what the true message is, is stopping the word from getting out. No, and no, and no, 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 no. How can it be? How can, even in this Wall Street Journal poll that's got you so ticked off, 51% of the people think Obama doesn't care about it. He's just doing this to advance his agenda. I've got two other polls. American satisfaction with U.S. government drops to new low. Americans speaking out on government shutdown. I think Obama's being kind of crappy. Nobody likes Obamacare. The media loves Obama, loves government, loves Obamacare. Why? The reality is, Shelley, that the media is not successfully propagandizing everybody. You just think they are. Well... I sure hope you're right. Because the biggest the problem I... that you have, I'm telling you, you would not feel this way if your party were fighting back right. instead of just somebody on the radio. But they don't have the propaganda machine like the left does to get it out there. They censor it. The, the, the propaganda machine, the media, the drive-by media has all the bully pulpits. And just because Obama makes a statement, it is so, Look, and they I, get it out there. I do and the real not ever gets to the people. Well, I don't reject any of that, but they don't win everything. You know, George W. Bush was elected twice. Ronald Reagan was elected twice. They don't get everything they want. They can't make everybody love Obamacare. They still don't have their amnesty, and they've been trying like hell's half acre to get it. They're not winning everything. You've you've got to try to stay focused on the reality things. Sure, it's unfair. Yes, the media is a bunch of bunk. Yes, what they're doing is irresponsible. Yes, what they're doing is not even... I understand all of that. But you you can't make... You, you, you can't assume... Look at what you're having. Shelley, in order for you to, to, to have the mindset you've got, you, you are sitting there believing that the media is convincing everybody, that everybody believes them. And then furthermore... Even when I say Republicans push back, you don't even think that would work. You've already given up. it. You've already acting defeated. And no matter what anybody proposes as an idea to counter that, you're not willing to accept that it can work because you think the media already has secured defeat from not only the end of time for us. Is that right? My argument. 
You even t- said they're, they're teaching the, the, the uh, producers of TV programs to get the message out, so it's all kind of subliminal. The, the, the low-information voter saw, sees that on a TV program, and yeah, that underscores how they feel. They're not, they may hate Obama, what? but they're not going to admit they're wrong, and you're not going to see them hit, hit the other um, candidate on the ballot. They will stand in line no matter what argument you give them that all of this is uh, trumped up, that it's all okay. wrong, that they don't see what's happening to this country. All right. They don't Hold see it freedom right there. being removed. Then what is your solution? <laughs> now, there is the $64 million question. What is the solution? I don't know unless somebody who's uh, all-encompassing buys out the media and gets our message out there like these cunning liars do it's not possible. on the other side. It's not possible. The media yep. owns all the bully pulpits, as you said. It doesn't yeah. matter. It isn't possible. You've just told me it isn't possible. That's what I'm saying. So you make my argument. You make my argument. I mean, I'm glad you're there. I am glad you're there. You pump us up. And you have all the right facts. But I'm but not... When I try to bring those facts to somebody who's on the other side, they don't want to even go there. They don't even want to hear the facts. Here, look, They're look staying at, with their feet dug in. Shelley, uh, let, me, let me try one more time. I'm not denying the points you make about the media. I'm not even, I'm not even trying to correct you. What I'm trying to do... Even though the media exist as they do, how come most people oppose Obamacare and don't want anything to do with it? The media has done nothing but say how great it is. The media has done nothing but say how great Obama is. The media has done nothing but say how fair and wonderful Obamacare is. And yet, clear majorities of people increasing every day want no part of it. How did it happen? I, I, hope, I hope you're right. I hope I'm wrong. I'm, I, I so I'm, hope I'm wrong. It's not a question of being right or wrong. It's a question of not giving up and trying to under, be grounded in reality. You're, what, what's happening is you're falling prey to your fear. Your fear is the media is persuading everybody. But they haven't persuaded you. How did that happen? Are you the only one that sees it? Are you the only one immune to them? Are you the only one that hasn't been fooled by them? I don't think so. So how's it happening? You know what Hollywood's doing, but they don't they don't propagandize you. Hollywood doesn't get away with making you love Obama or Obamacare or climate change, but you're living in fear that they're making everybody else stupid and dumb and that they're convincing when when the reality is they aren't. And the reality is that the people of this country are fed up with government, and that includes Obama. And I've got the polling data that says so, and it's right here in the AP, and it is in Gallup. And these are mainstream, so-called dominant media news organizations. I'm, I'm not trying to buck anybody up here. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to artificially keep you in a good mood. Or, or keep you positive. I'm just telling you what's really happening out there. Let me, the Republican strategy on Obamacare is to stand aside, let it happen, let it roll out, let it be such a disaster that they claim it's going to be, that it's just, it's too big, it can't possibly work. Well, that strategy can only work if... The people are able to conclude that it sucks as they attempt to use it. And I'm telling you, the vast majority of people don't want any part of it already. 51,000 people have signed up. I don't know how many more have tried, but there isn't a mad dash to healthcare.gov going on. That's why they won't tell us the numbers. There is not a mad dash to sign up. The biggest characterization of people signing up is the curious, to see what the hell it is. But there is not a groundswell of, oh my God, I love Obama, oh I love health care, oh I love Obamacare, oh I want to sign up, oh I can't wait to get the health care. That doesn't exist. 51,000 people have signed up. 
51,000 people out of a population of 300 some odd million, and it happens to be the law of the land. And if you don't sign up, the IRS theoretically is going to find you and assess a tax on you or a fine if you don't. Shelley, my only, you asked me, how do, how, do, how do I go on? I go on because I know that people like you are out there and you've got to learn to do the same thing. You've got to get rid of this fear that you're the only one who sees the truth. You've got to get rid of this fear that everybody is succumbing to the temptations of the drive-by media. And I'll guarantee you that if your political party, the one you vote for and the one you have hopes of opposing this, were actually fighting back, you would know about it and you would be happier than you are now when they don't fight back. And you would know about it whether the media covers it or not. And you'd be happy about it. Uh, the, the biggest problem that we have right now is that is that the uh, elected representatives of the people who oppose this just aren't showing up. And it's been this way for a while. And in fact, it's worse than that. The people you expect to be fighting back are trying to figure out how to get along. And by the speaking of that, let me go to the second story here in a stack that I have. Right. Here it is. This is from the Hill.com. Shelley, this story is going to make you mad because it's more media lying. But may not be media lying, but still going to make you mad. Here it is. Headline, White House sees GOP on the ropes. Why? What happened? Well, they compromised. The Republicans heard the call. The Republicans heard the groundswell, the supposed groundswell of the people. The Republicans heard, from where? The media. That the people were demanding compromise. The Republicans heard that the people were demanding cooperation. The Republicans heard that the people were demanding that they get together and talk. And so the Republicans said, okay, you know what? We will gain favor with the people, and we will go talk. And so they had a big confab at the White House with Obama yesterday. Guess what? They went up there, and it's you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. To see all the good compromising does, all the Republican offers, all their efforts to reach a compromise— are now being held against them. As always, the Republicans are damned if they do and damned if they don't negotiate. Senior administration officials and White House allies point to the unsteady political maneuvers taken by Republicans in recent days as proof that the president's no-negotiation strategy is succeeding. Really? I thought the American people wanted us to negotiate. The American people were told that. I mean, the Republicans were told that. We want to negotiate. We want to negotiate. We want to hear negotiation. We want to see negotiate. Obama said, no, no, I'm not. He was taking it on the chin for not negotiating. Obama had to call a press conference. Obama had to go out and, and start lying through his teeth about how he was willing to talk to anybody. He was losing on it. Republicans went up and talked to him. Good faith effort. They thought he was serious. And the whole point was for him to say no for him to kick them out of the White House, they go home at the end of the two-hour negotiating period. They get portrayed as a bunch of extremist wackos who came in here and basically told Obama to quit and resign, essentially. That's not precise, but that's the point they try to make at the exaggeration. And so Obama, turns out, was right all along. It was just better if he didn't negotiate because these Republicans are so demanding and so unreasonable and so stupid and so silly. It would have been better... If they just held out, it's always the case. Every time they get sucked in, by do it, and what are they doing, Shelley? They're just trying to curry favor with the media. That's all they're doing. Frustrating as it can be, just trying to curry favor. And they live in this dream world where that can happen. They actually live in a dream world where media is going to like them, media is going to respect them. It never works. The only thing that works is holding out for what you believe. I'll tell you this too, folks. I'm just speaking bluntly. If if Ted Cruz and Mike Lee would go away, which is what the Republican 
donor class supposedly demanding. The Republican consultants class is demanding. Uh, McCain is demanding it. Uh, you know, the get off my lawn people are demanding it. All of the uh, age-old, tired, worn-out Republican losers are demanding that Cruz and Lee go away. And if they did go away, the problem would remain because Cruz and Lee aren't the problem. The content of the Republican Party, the product, the brand, you know, whatever way you want to characterize it, is not what the best customers want. The heavy users want. This is the only, again, it's a business analogy, and I admit that it's flawed, but it's, it's as close as I can get. Any brand that sells a product or service has its best customers, and they do whatever they can to keep them, my God, by definition. Particularly in a brand crisis or any other kind of – the Republican Party is doing the exact opposite, taking the best users and acting embarrassed of them and trying to find ways to get rid of them. And it just makes no sense. And so the brand remains diminished in a culture that is hostile to the perception of what Republican has come to mean. And the leaders of the Republican Party do not understand that it's not the Mike Lees and the Ted Cruz's and the Rush Limbo's or whatever name of a conservative you want to add into this list. That's not the problem with the Republican Party brand. I haven't lost an election yet, and I haven't run for one either. But Ted Cruz wins elections. Mike Lee wins elections. In fact, the fact, the fact of the matter is that, that you can't keep, this party just can't keep nominating McCain's and moderates and Northeasterners and establishment types who think that the future of the party is to be Dem- Democrat light. That's not going to fix the brand damage, but they think it is. Because they think the brand damage is because of conservatives. It's not. Anyway, I have to take a break. I just saw the clock. I'll be an engineer getting scared here. 